Hello, my name is Daniel Pinkston. I'm in my last year of high school, about to go to university. About two and a half years ago, I discovered Emacs. My life has now been separated into two chapters, before and after Emacs. How could this tool be so impactful? Well, you'll just have to see. I made this talk for people who ask questions like this, but don't know where to start. When I started using Emacs for school, it took me a long time to find what I liked. There wasn't many examples of a full process for organization. This talk was made to guide students like me, those who wanted more from their software workflow that they can learn and adapt from. My main idea was essentially explained by Zeist in his Emacs Comp presentation in 2019. He said something to the effect of, one of the great parts about Doom Emacs as a starting point is that it shows beginners how different packages mesh with each other. He says that people often have trouble seeing how to develop workflows using the thousands of packages Emacs has. In this talk, I introduce some Emacs tools and how they work together to improve a student's academic workflow. Let us commence. If you are watching this talk and have never heard of Emacs, it's a customizable text editor. When you become more experienced, it becomes your entire operating system. You just live inside of Emacs. It's also free as in free pencils and open source, which means that you don't have to pay to download Emacs and its source code. Emacs doesn't charge you a monthly subscription, nor does it steal all of your information. Yeah, I know, it's pretty crazy. In this talk, I introduce some Emacs tools and how they work together to improve a student's academic workflow. Earlier I read this post on this website that said, I can only imagine the great things you'd be able to learn and retain in your brain thanks to the great Emacs ecosystem. You've made the best choice with far-going implications. I promise you not once, not even subtly, have I ever regretted having invested in learning Emacs. It's the best gift anyone can present to themselves. You will forever feel indebted to your younger self for this gift. I guarantee that. I think that this is a real testament to the true power of Emacs. There's simply no other software like it. It's a complete and fitting solution for those who are willing to master it. Hopefully by now you're invested in learning Emacs. But before we jump into the technicalities of everything, we should outline the main things that you need it to do as a student. The best students have their system figured out so that it can do these things quickly and efficiently. They should have no problem quickly organizing what they need to do along with capturing information from their classes. But you may be wondering, how does Emacs do all that? Well, it does it with org mode. It was built to be an outliner for note-taking and list management, exactly what a student needs. One of the key features is that it's plain text, which means that you can migrate it between computers and it's not a proprietary format. For those of you who have heard of Markdown, org is similar in that it's a markup language. However, it's a bit older and it goes way beyond Markdown's simple text formatting with its scheduling, task management, and organization features, all captured within plain text simplicity. This slide shows off one of my notes from a heavily customized Emacs window. Yours probably won't look like this from the start, but you can personalize its appearance with custom themes. It's finally time to get into the technicalities. What you need to do with your notes in org mode is create, search, and possibly publish them. I prefer Denote for creating my notes, but there are many Emacs packages for that. Denote is just lightweight and gets the job done. I used to use org roam, but I didn't need or use all of its features. I also use Anki, a free and open source flashcard program, but of course, I make all my flashcards in org mode. For searching, I often use find and grep, which are both standard utilities on Linux. Other operating systems probably have a tool to replicate this functionality. The final item is exporting. There are many scenarios in which I want to publish my notes to share them with teachers or peers. One of my favorite features of org mode is the exportability of the notes you make. This presentation was actually made in org mode, and so are all of my lab reports and essays for school. I also write my web page articles in org mode, which a program called Hugo converts into static HTML. So far, you haven't actually seen what it's like to use these tools. Here's a quick demo of how I track what I need to do. First, I always open up my todo.org file in my denote directory. For school assignments, I have a heading under inbox where I have entries for each class I'm enrolled in. Each class's heading has a tag on it, which the assignment inherits as a subheading. Here's an example assignment. I have a test in physics next next Wednesday, and the deadline to finish studying for it is the day that I'm taking it. When I plan my studying, I run the keybind for org schedule to schedule the day on which I will study it. I can also mark it as the highest priority, making it the most important thing to do. I can also open up my agenda to see my tasks. I've cleaned it up as to not reveal any of my nefarious plans. 
This agenda is customized, but there are many tutorials on how to do this. My agenda has been the most transforming part of my student experience, and I've gotten a lot better at managing what I need to do. Next, I'll show you what I like to do to take notes. The main entry point for a new note is always starting with Meta X Denote. You fill out a couple of customizable prompts that will ask for values of the note. I'll start by making a new note, which we'll call Test Note. Then we'll give it a key for what category it's under. For this, I usually put the subject of the class that I'm doing this note for, be it programming, English, history, or science. Try to keep them short. And then Shazam! We have ourselves a brand new note, which we can start typing away in. The cool thing about the note is, you don't have to manually name your note files. It uses a standard convention using the time, the title, and the keywords of the note to make it unique. You can even make a meta note, a note about notes, to show a list of notes under a certain keyword. The final step in creation is flashcards. There is a great package called Anki Editor that makes Emacs able to push cards into Anki. There isn't much to overcomplicate here, it's just content on front and back, sometimes with images and complete the phrase. You can also set up LaTeX math formatting, but I don't really use it that much. If you're living in Emacs all the time, you may want some creature comforts. These are some of my favorite. Org download is a package that allows you to paste images from your clipboard into an org file. Logos is a text narrowing tool that helps you restrict what text you can see and focus on what you're writing. It extends Emacs default narrowing, also adding functionality for quickly switching to headings for a presentation look. It can remove your mode line and center your text for better focus. Org FragTog allows you to move between previews of your LaTeX formulas and the unrendered syntax. PDF View Mode is a fully fledged PDF reader, complete with annotations and org syntax, highlighting, and clickable links. Something you may want to consider is digital versus handwritten notes. There have been several talks in the past about how to integrate handwritten notes into Emacs, such as retyping them or scanning them in with an OCR tool. I don't think that type notes are the only way that you should take notes, but if you do try writing, at least get some nice stationery. I've seen people ask online to YouTubers and Twitch streamers asking, what is your keyboard? What is your window manager? I understand that they're curious, but cosplaying as a productive person by using the same tools won't accomplish anything. Emacs will not make you a productive person. It can be a significant time investment because of how customizable it is. However, I believe it will make it easier for you to be productive, as it certainly has for me. This was just an example workflow to show prospective students how they can use Emacs for their needs. Even if you don't end up using Emacs in the end, you can still apply most of its ideas to other software, it just won't be as customizable and extensible as Emacs is. Thank you for listening to my talk. It's been a great pleasure to finally take part in this conference in some capacity, and I'm glad I was given a chance. To all the students who may try Emacs in the future, good luck because there might not be any going back. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. Thank you for your time.